Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Tekanoff. I'm an attorney and self-published author in Fresno County, California. I wrote a book about the Article 5 Constitutional Convention Clause. I would like to show you how the first Congress dealt with Article 5 applications. This is especially for state legislators dealing with Article 5 resolutions and everybody who wants to learn more about the Article 5 Constitutional Convention process. Two Article 5 applications were presented to the House of Representatives during the first Congress. On May 5 of 1789, Virginia's application, and on May 6, New York's application. Mr. Bland from Virginia presented Virginia's application. It asked for the immediate calling of a convention with full power to take into consideration the defects of the federal constitution and to report such amendments as the convention should find best suited to promote our common interests. Mr. Boudinot rose and stated, according to the terms of the constitution, the business cannot be taken up until a certain number of states have concurred in similar applications. Then he says that certainly the house are disposed to pay a proper attention to the application. These statements appear to acknowledge that the Article 5 application of Virginia is an application for a full-powered Article 5 convention that would have a power to do a clause-by-clause -clause review. And everybody at uh, this time appeared to interpret the Article 5 convention clause in such manner that that is what the Article 5 convention is, a full-powered convention. Now here's a key passage from James Madison himself. He stated that he had no doubt but the House were inclined to treat the present application with respect, meaning that it's the plenary Article 5 convention and that's appropriate and so they were accepting it. But he said he doubted the propriety of committing it because that would seem to imply that the House had a right to deliberate upon the subject meaning that they had no discretion. If it was a full-powered application, an application for the full-powered Article 5 convention, and two-thirds of the state legislatures applied for the full-powered convention, then there's no discretion by the House. The House has to call the, con the convention, and that, in fact, is the only kind of convention which the states may vote for and which the House may acknowledge. Madison then makes reference to the language in Article 5 that Congress shall call a convention for proposing amendments when two-thirds of the states apply, therefore. And as he says here, Congress has no deliberative power. And what they decided to do, according to Madison's suggestion as well, is that this should just be placed in a pile, so to speak, until two-thirds of the state legislatures make similar applications, meaning applications for the convention which has the power to do a clause-by-clause -clause review. Then Mr. Boudinot confirms this view and he states, what can the committee report? The application is to call a new convention. There's nothing left for us to do but to call one when two-thirds of the state legislatures apply for that purpose. Then Mr. Huntington makes a good point. He says it's proper to let the application remain on the table. It can be called up when others make up the two-thirds. But what he's saying here also, he's agreeing with Madison, it's improper to commit it because it would argue that they had a right to deliberate whether or not to proceed with the Article 5 convention and a power to procrastinate, as he says. And this is something to think about today. If 34 state legislatures actually call for the full powered Article 5 convention, Congress should be calling it the day they receive the 34th application. We shouldn't get into a situation, for example, like with um, a prior Supreme Court justice when the Senate delayed for 10 months. That would be a corrupt Congress basically trying to prevent amendments. And it's clear from Farron's records, the records of the original convention of 1787, 
that that was clearly not intended by the convention delegates. Here, Mr. Tucker is making a sort of fine point. He is saying that, yes, it's true that if two thirds of the states apply for the full powered um, convention, then they have no power of deliberation. There's no discretion. However, if the states are starting to send in Article 5 applications and they're bringing up certain topics, Congress has its own power to propose amendments. And if they want to sort of get in front of the process and try to take care of it ahead of time, they certainly have the power to do that as well. Mr. Bland, the gentleman who had originally presented the application, acquiesced in placing Virginia's Article 5 application on the table until two-thirds of the states had made application for a similar Article 5 convention with full power to do a clause-by-clause -clause review. Then on the next day, on May 6, Mr. Lawrence of New York presented New York's Article 5 application. They had just had the same debate the day before, so there was no real debate. It was ordered to be placed on the table until two-thirds of state legislatures also applied for the similar Article 5 convention with the full power to do a clause-by-clause -clause review. Here's the language of New York's application. They're asking for a convention with full powers to take the Constitution into consideration and to propose such amendments as they shall find best calculated to promote our common interests. If you look at this early period, there are no applications for an Article 5 convention which attempt to limit the powers of the convention. Two and a half months later, James Madison brings up his motion to prepare a Bill of Rights. During that process, the House votes that their power to propose constitutional amendments per Article 5 is not limited by the state legislatures. This becomes the rule and during this early period is never challenged by the states directly. Later, the southern slave states assert a theory of nullification and this eventually leads to the Civil War. For further study, I invite you to take a look at my book, Guide to the First Article 5 Convention of the People.